Hey y'all, welcome to the Bourbon Earring Podcast. I'm Austin. I'm here with my co-host and dog, Piper. You might hear her rustling around today. And today we're going to talk about big distilleries versus craft distilleries. Kind of be a little series. This first episode here, uh, it's going to be two-part series. The first one's going to be on the bigger distilleries and companies and how that works. And the pros and cons of whiskey from a big distillery versus uh, next episode when we talk about a craft distillery. Um, we'll talk again about the pros and cons of craft whiskey and then how you know how the the business model looks there compared to the big distilleries. So today, uh, talking about big dis- distilleries uh, and then how they work. I mean, obviously in the bourbon world, you're thinking of your Buffalo Trace, your Heaven Hill. Um, yeah there's there's more even i would even consider high west starting to get into the the world of big and you know uh maker's mark is a big one brand distillery um but obviously heaven hill and and, uh buffalo trace have many different brands um and then i guess we'll go into the pros and cons the pro the pro of that is you're going to get consistency. You're going to get a wide variety of products, and each product you're going to get is going to be very consistent. Uh, Maker's Mark is an example everyone uses. Whether you get a bottle of Maker's Mark uh, today in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or 10 years down the road in London, England, it's going to be it's going to taste the same. It's going to be the same juice. Um, and they're really, really good at that. Really, really good at um, making sure the product is consistent. Now, the other, to me, the biggest advantage to a large distillery or, you know, enjoying a large distillery's drinks is they have a wide variety. Like Buffalo Trace, for example, they have, you know, the bourbon, they have two different mash bills of bourbon, uh, a rye mash bill, different things like that, a weeded mash bill. And even within those mash bills, there's 10, 12 different releases, different ages, different spots in the Rick House and uh, all those are very consistent, but there's a wide variety. Uh, I mean, I love Buffalo Trace, the regular bourbon, and I love you know the Weller, the weeded, ver- or weeded mash bill, and all from the same distillery. You know, you can have a whole bar. They make vodka for goodness sakes. Uh, you know, you can have a whole five bottle bar or more just from one distillery. And they're all good product, you know. They're not making crappy stuff. You think of the huge ones like Jack Daniels and I mean Jim Beam. Even their baseline stuff is quality. You know what you're gonna get, um, and it's just you can't you can't do that with a, a smaller distillery or craft distillery starting out. Um, now they have their own advantages, and you'll see that in the next episode. But it's something you just can't attain in small distilleries. Now. There's some more pros to that. Um, each distillery has their own tours, different, you know, entertainment styles. Like uh, Bardstown Bourbon Company, now they're big in the, um, just like MGP in the, uh, what am I trying to say here? The sourcing department, they're, uh, they get hired, contract distilling. They get contracted to uh, distill for different companies. They have a whole restaurant lined up, uh, special tours for different things. Um, I mean, I was looking into tours at Lefroy in uh, Scotland. They have like four or five different tours on site just for different things you want to see. Um, and it's really, they're really, they're in the entertainment business almost as much as they are in the uh, whiskey business. And it's great. I mean, it's great for the local community, the local economy. It's great for the company. It's fun as a tourist, you know, uh, get to see that how things are made, get to drink some good whiskey, and it's a it's a show. I mean, one of the most famous guys at uh, Buffalo Trace is the tour guide Freddie. He's he's more famous almost than the current master distiller, uh, Harlem Wheatley, I believe his name is. To me, at least, I mean, I heard about Freddie before I heard about the master distiller over there. So that just goes to show how much of a entertainment business it is and not saying that in a bad way i think it's a great thing um it's a lot of fun to go to they have a whole whiskey trail for a reason over there or bourbon trail um going into the the cons of the big distilling is you're gonna be you're gonna be uh limited on what you can find certain places 
Now, this is true for craft distilling too, but it's even more evident in the big distilling now. Like Buffalo Trace here in Baton Rouge is prevalent and cheap. Go somewhere else, you know, they're limited one to bottle in town. They release the regular Buffalo Trace. Don't even get me started on Eagle Rare and, of course, Blanton's. They can't find Blanton's anywhere. They can build up hype that may not necessarily be worth it. Like, Blanton's good, and anytime I get a chance to get a bottle of retail, heck yeah, I'm going to grab it. But much over retail, I'm not hunting for it. I'm not going to wait in line for it. Uh, It's just, it's not worth it. It's not that good. Things get overhyped, and they have full control about over how much they make. Now, they may not have full control about how much they can make, but they have full control to release less. You know, they, if you, just for math's sake, say they make 10 barrels a year of this super fancy bourbon uh, that they release. Now, they can release eight if they want to bump the price up a little bit more, even though they made 10. Or, you know, they can't release more than the 10 that they made, obviously, but they have control in that sense um, to artificially inflate the market and they can flood it with cheap stuff too they can uh make a thousand barrels a day of you know mellow corn and just flood the market with it and say tell their uh distributors hey you can't sell this i mean you can't sell you know pappy over here without buying a case of mellow corn and they have a lot of control of the market, especially the big company like Sazerac that owns a bunch of even they own big distilleries. I believe they own Buffalo Trace. Um, and uh, Beam Santori owns Jim Beam and obviously Santori Whiskey in Japan. They just have a such a big grasp on the market, almost monopolies, although not quite. Um, I mean, Buffalo Trace makes Pappy Van Winkle, which is the most sought after bourbon maybe even whiskey in the world highest secondary prices and all that it's it's just insane what they can do just with controlling how many barrels of a certain product they release anyway i'm gonna get off my soapbox we're gonna take a little break and then we're gonna drink some whiskey hey guys austin here with bourboneering to talk about prestige decanters uh prestige is where i get my whiskey tasting glasses for all my podcasts um I do all my reviews with these glasses. They're a beautiful tulip shape. Um, They also have a lot of fun rocks glasses and things like that, as well as beautiful decanters like their name suggests. Uh, Use the link in uh, the description below and use promo code BourbonEar, and you can get 8% off your order at Prestige. It helps the show out. It helps you out and helps uh, them out. So check them out when you get a chance, and thanks for listening. All right, guys, we got an interesting whiskey today. It's uh, Caribou Crossing. It's a single-barrel Canadian whiskey. Um, I picked this one because for my March Madness bracket battle, I need some more world whiskeys or other whiskeys. But also, this uh, barrel is imported by the Sazerac Company from Louisville, Kentucky. Sazerac is the company, I believe, that owns Buffalo Trace, or um, did at least, um, so that shows they have their hand in multiple markets across the world. Um, this is actually a single barrel pick from Elixir uh, Wine Spirits in uh, Franklin, or it's in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Uh, selected on September nineteenth, twenty eighteen. So this is, I believe, known as the Canadian Blantons because it's kind of hard to find. So I'm glad I got a bottle of it. It's a good little pop. Now, again, drinking out of my prestige decanter glass. Love this glass for taste. This is the whiskey. There's an aficionado and there's an enthusiast glass. They're both similar shaped, uh, just different styles. I might do a head-to-head comparison of them them one day. But I love this glass. Uh, Enough about that, though. So, color. It's pretty dark. It looks like about a, a normal darkness of a bourbon it's not like a lighter scotch by any means nose right away you get rye notes a little bit lighter on the nose kind of between a rye and a scotch there's some there's some bourbonness in there there's some you know vanilla notes but on top it's it's like candy almost like a high rye but like some irish notes maybe on the nose let me see what the proof is. 
It's 80 proof. Okay. Okay. It smells, it smells a little alcoholic to be 80 proof. Mm. Don't taste it though. Man, that's sweet. That's easy. It uh, that taste is almost it's almost between an Irish and a a rye. It's sweet crackery, but also uh back end of rice spice. Mm, that's really good. I wish I knew the mash bill of this. Like sweet, like a vanilla cake. But not cloyingly sweet. Not too sweet. But definitely a noticeable clean sweetness, not like a maple or anything. Mm. Kind of thick for um, such a low proof. Eh, medium finish, not too, too long. Again, it sticks up for an 80 proof. Real nice. Uh, not getting much taste on the finish, just more of a, a tingle, if that makes sense. I enjoy this. This is good. Uh, the only other Canadian whiskey I've ever had, though, is uh, Crown, Crown Royal. So I don't really have anything to compare it to style-wise. I don't know if Canadian has its own style. But I enjoy this. <laughs> I enjoy this a lot. I see why it's a popular bottle. I'm going to have to give it a, I'm going to give it a, a 3.8 because it's really good. Uh, I don't know if it's a good reflection of the style or not, or if there even is a style, but 3.8 is what I'm going to give it. It's really good. I'm enjoying this bottle. I need to pour from it more. I kind of forget about it. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Y'all thanks for listening. Uh, remember I have a new newsletter, so sign up on uh, the link below along with follow me on all, all my social medias. Subscribe. Please give me a, a review, five star if you like it. Give me a, a rating and review on iTunes or whatever you listen on. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks for listening, guys. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you subscribe on whichever player you're using. Leave a comment and leave a five star review if you can. Once you've done that, go follow me on Instagram at Bourboneering or on Twitter at N Bourbon or go like our Facebook page, uh, Bourboneering. All this, as well as my Prestige Decanter affiliate link. And a link to sign up for a weekly newsletter are all below. Thanks for listening, everybody. Cheers.